Thank you, Mr. President, Excellencies, Honourable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates. Almost 30 years ago, in our Lenkawi Declaration of 1989, Commonwealth nations collectively expressed deep concern at the threat posed by serious deterioration in the environment, warning that any delay in taking action to halt this progressive deterioration will result in permanent and irreversible damage. Hurricanes Irma and Maria have shown us how prophetic those words were. The existential threat that was feared eventually arrived. Every region of the Commonwealth has been affected by the adverse impact of the change in climate. We have had mudslides in Sierra Leone, flooding in Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, Sri Lanka. The African states have been terrorized by the drop in rainfall by more than 35%. And in the Caribbean, nine states have been affected. And then Vanuatu in the Pacific. But least Europe thought it was going to be left out, we had Hurricane Ophelia in Ireland and orange skies in the United Kingdom. So no one has been left untouched in our Commonwealth. It is therefore not surprising that tackling climate change remains a primary concern for collective action by our 52 member states and requires a complete regenerative revolution in the way we interact with our environment, blending the effort needed for land, oceans and people. The consensus reached at our most recent Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in Malta, immediately preceding COP21, helped pave the way towards the Paris Agreement. When Commonwealth leaders meet in London in April of next year, we will again be considering practical action to tackle climate change, to protect the environment and increase the resilience of our members through sustainable development in accordance with the values and principles of our Commonwealth Charter. We are now working towards the Commonwealth Blue Charter of principles for sustainable ocean development so that unlocking economic value from the seas is married with the imperative of protecting the environment and recognizing that ocean wealth depends on ocean health. A particular Commonwealth focus is mutual support by member states towards implementing the Paris Agreement and achieving NDCs, with emphasis on gender equality and youth empowerment. Our Commonwealth Climate Finance Hub assists member states with human and institutional capacity building, enabling them to unlock funding for mitigation and adaptation they would not otherwise be able to reach. The loss and damage caused to small and vulnerable states in the last two months is terrifying in its impact. Barbuda devastated and the whole population evacuated to its sister island of Antigua. The damage to Dominica, the land of my birth, has equated to 200% of GDP. People who may have been willing to describe themselves as medium income moments before the hurricane Maria struck were moments after she left, helpless, homeless, and finally destitute, blessing themselves that they had miraculously managed to escape with their lives, but everything of material worth was gone. Having just returned from visiting the Caribbean islands devastated by the hurricanes, I am persuaded that the ODA rules need reform to ensure that where a swathe is cut through GDP, countries should not be ineligible to aid. 
Excellencies, Mr. President, our Commonwealth's commitment as a family of nations set in every continent and ocean is to build on the commonalities and wisdom of shared inheritances towards a common future that is fairer, more prosperous, more secure, and more sustainable. We continue to promote mutually supporting each other to develop a regenerative approach to implement the Paris Agreement and achieve the NDCs as we build towards a common blue earth. This COP is of critical importance and we must act and we must act now because if not now, when? And if not us, who?